Okay, in this lesson I'm going to talk about polygenic inheritance. And if you just look at the word polygenic, you see poly meaning more than one or several. And you also see the word genic referring to genes. Um, <clears throat> when we did Mendelian genetics, if you'll recall, when we talked about pea plants, the uh, gene for pea plants for height was controlled by one gene location. So I drew some fictitious chromosomes here, one from the mother, one from the father. And at that particular gene location, you had the options of having the alleles big T or little t. So if you were to see this particular plant, this plant would be a tall plant because it has the dominant tall allele. A short plant would be very noticeable because it would be this, I mean, much smaller than what the tall plant is. Now, if you recall, when I talked about, whenever somebody asked questions about human beings and, and is this how human height is determined, I always said, no, it's much more complicated than that. Well, today I'm going to talk about how polygenic inheritance is what gives people their, their different height, so to speak. Um, and again, there is no, there's nothing ambiguous whatsoever about whether this is tall or this is short. It's very clear cut. There's no gray areas. In human beings, however, if I were to line up people, you would see that there would be a full spectrum of heights. And we could do this even in the classroom. And there's a very gray area where you stop referring to somebody as being tall and start thinking about them as being short. Some people might say that this is the area. It's, it's, it's debatable. Same thing with nose sizes. Somebody's, a, a bird's nose might be this big. bird's nose could be that big. could be that big. It could be that big. You can see that they're all different sizes. Or ear size is another one. Different sized ears. There's no cut and dry decision in terms of which one you're going to call big and what you're going to call small. So how do you get this variety of expression of traits? Well, instead of there being just one gene location, like for pea plants to control height, we're going to see that there are several gene locations that all chip in together to contribute to an organism's height, skin color, hair color, nose size, any trait that is ambiguous or has a, a large variety of phenotypes is usually explained by this method. So I'm going to say that this organism is big A, little a, big B, little b, big C, little c, and big D, little d. So this organism's genotype, for, this, for we'll say for height, is going to be Big A, little a, got one of these alleles from mom, one from dad. Big B, little b, big C, little c, and big D, little d. This would be, we'll say, an average sized person. We'll say that this is the genotype for this person right here. So what about this guy? What is his genotype going to be? We could say that for him, he's big A, big A, big B, big B, big C, big C, and big D, big D meaning he has the extreme form of all those alleles, which gives him his tall height. What would this person be for a genotype? Using multiple alleles, I'm sorry, using polygenic inheritance, we would say that this person could be little a, little a, little b, little b, little c, little c, and little d, little d. So all these genes chip in together to express the trait that has a wide variety of expression, and that is what is meant by polygenic inheritance. Instead of two genes or one gene location, two alleles controlling the expression, like in this case tall, there are many genes that work together to give the expression. So again, in our example, this one would be a very tall person, this one would be average, and this person would be a short person. So this is polygenic inheritance.